So I was trying to work on my engine, but it took me a long time to get an update out. So I was like, I'm just going to post a video about a cool experience I had. And then it blew up, and then people kept telling me how bad my coding was. And so I couldn't work on the engine anymore. I had to work on this new file. So a big problem I was running into was that it's hard to maintain my project when um, when every single different data type is a different structure and so I got a ton of comments telling me to use templates so that's what I went ahead and did first I, I actually I grabbed the uint 512 underscore t because that was the uh, that was like the most generalized one and I turned it into a template and it was actually really easy and it involved me like deleting like 2,000 lines of code and now, if I make an optimization, it optimizes everything. And also, I can create infinite numbers. So people were getting mad at me because um, I was using, I wasn't, I wasn't using the standard library enough. And I guess that uh, they're thinking, well, I use other standard libraries. So why am I not using uint64 underscore t? Well, I decided to remove all standard libraries from this file. So it's just hashtag pragma once so it's just hashtag pragma once and it gets right into the code and uh, I don't know if it runs fast or not I I hope it runs faster I mean it definitely takes less time to compile the next thing I want to do was make it less boilerplate I'm not entirely sure how that what that means because I'm pretty sure all my operators did have definitions except for like one of them but um, I went ahead and I uh, made I made templates for all of the operators inside inside the template struct. So now you can add and subtract, multiply and divide and do all the operators with um every single data type in C. So they're a lot more they're a lot more friendly now. Um, you know you can just use a dynamic array of digits, right? Um actually <laughs> it's too slow. Look up Omeganum and the Talesman mod from Belotro. Oh, Omega Num. JavaScript. <laughs> you can't use this. This is madness. The next thing that piqued my interest was someone told me that Bro was about to s use a whole megabyte to store a bool. And I was instantly intrigued. So, <laughs> my first thought was to use a vector filled with a million bools. Because, um, since each bool is a byte, then um, I could store it would be, it would technically be a megabyte of memory, but this was too inefficient. Since a bool just needs to store the value zero and one, storing it in an entire byte is just it's just a waste of space. And so I could technically store each bool in a bit. And I searched it up, and there's a thing called STD bit set, where you can compress data into individual bits, and so you could have a vector of bits of a bit set. I mean, <laughs> and then each b boolean would be a singular bit, and you could store eight times as much. <laughs> you could have eight million booleans in a single um, megabyte instead of just one million. And I went a little farther. I did ask ChatGPT to make a custom bit set, but um, that's just because I wanted to see the code that my bit set was doing, and. Um, I could have just used the standard library, so no one better get mad at me for using AI for this. So then I made changes to it, and I got it working really, really fast. In fact, I could loop through all 8 million bits in like sub one second. Uh, I, well, it wasn't just looping through it though, it was like doing a, <laughs> making a random boolean for each one of them, and if the random boolean was true, it would set the bit to 1. If it was false, it would set the bit to zero for each one of those, each one of those bits. So, it wasn't like a simple thing. I did not know C++ was that fast. This also gave me the idea that I could use the bit set to like make my own custom variables instead of unsigned long longs. But I'll think about that later. The next suggestion, though, that I wanted to add was to add uh, colognes. Uh, Sloan, Sl Sl Sloan Super Factorial. Apparently, Sloan Super Factorial is 
like the factorial of the number and then the factorial of the number below it. So like it's like how a factorial works, except factorial all the factorials. So it's it's, <laughs> it's really big. Okay, and it takes a lot longer to compute than a normal factorial does. Um, but, and it took me quite a while to get it to work. I just, I was running into so many issues, but um, I think the issue was just because I was trying to use an array the wrong way, apparently. So I just switched to um, vectors. Those aren't variables. Types, they are all types, okay? Conclusion, use Python. No, I will never use Python, ever. I'm using C++ because it's the fastest programming language, okay? Python is interpreted. You can't even, can't even compare to C++. <laughs> so, I tried to use less AI for this video. In fact, I barely used any AI except for bug fixing for this video. Because a, a lot of people got mad at me. But, um, uh, I tried to implement the, um, using doubles instead of unsigned long longs for my, uh, for my um, variable types to store more numbers. Well, I had it as like a separate struct, but um, I I struggled so much with this. Um, I got I got it I got it mostly working, but when you try to print the number, it caps out at a certain point. I have no idea why. So <laughs> if you guys are watching this and there hasn't been a commit with like all caps saying that I fixed it, then uh, I guess. To help me fix it. So, uh, yeah, um, and bye.